Yo, what's up? My name is Rich and in this video right here, we're going to be discussing the different business models in t-shirt printing or t-shirt selling, um, which should I say? I don't know. But anyways, there's no right or wrong way to do t-shirt sales and I may skip over a few because I'm just going over some of the main ones and I'm going to let you know how my business model works as well. So um, before we get started, don't forget to hit subscribe to my channel and heat transfer warehouses channel you know why because i said at 10,000 subs once this channel get to 10,000 subs subscribers we're going to do a giveaway and heat transfer warehouse is going to give away a heat press along with 200 dollars credit that you can use towards super color transfers so you can start your own t-shirt brand or use it as a backup for print on demand um whatever it may be you want to start selling t-shirts this is your chance all you have to do is subscribe to both of our channels and follow both of us on instagram and then i'll let you know of the final action you need to take once we get to 10k subs but until then let's get into this video all right let's get straight into this t-shirt printing business models once again this has more to do with than just t-shirt printing this is literally just a decoration business in general also this isn't necessarily just for beginners it's intermediate it's advanced really it's just um it's just the idea of it right it's all about the execution so how well you execute on these business models um that's up to you so the first thing you need to know is b2b or b2c b2b businesses sell products and services directly to other businesses and B2C businesses sell products directly to the customer. So a B2B structure would include something like a bulk order at a wholesale price, quote unquote wholesale price, right? So pretty much just a really good price. This usually involves uh, lower pricing, but working with higher minimums um, because you gotta work with those high minimums to make up for that, that lower cost, that lower uh, profit margin. Um, you still have to have the other business uh, be able to make their profit or if they're like a charity or an organization They necessarily not trying to make a profit, but you know, they're trying to get it for a good price So you really have to focus on doing sales and very very high volume You got to move a lot of shirts around you got to do hundreds and hundreds and thousands of them Just to make up for the smaller profit usually this is most popular with screen printing because in screen printing It doesn't cost much ink uh, to print a t-shirt you can do very very quickly you can get a few hundred shirts done within an hour as long as they're the same design so that is one b2b structure another one is fulfillment for other businesses practically think like printful printify all those print on demand companies right they're fulfilling for your business with that as well they're working at a lower price so that you can still make a profit but um, they have to do sales in very high volume. They have to fulfill for a lot, a lot of people. It wouldn't make sense for them if they're only fulfilling a few orders here and there at a low price. You have to do sales in very high volume. Um, for them, it's not necessarily screen printing. It's mostly direct to garment because um, they have to cater to one-off designs. However, they usually have the more expensive uh, direct to garment printers like the Aeon. Is that how you say? It? I'm not sure. Um, the Cornet stuff like that. So. Ink cost is still low, maintenance can be a pain, but um, they're churning out shirts, a whole lot of it, to make up for those low prices. So that's a few B2B structures. I'm not going to be able to cover every single scenario or business model. I'm just doing uh, the basics that I can. So here's some B2C structures, storefront stores and or online. Um, this can still be the same for a B2B structure. You can still have a storefront with warehousing for all your printing equipment. You can still do online, but this is a little more prominent in B2C structures. So storefront, you know, think about like those little t-shirt shops on the boardwalk, custom t-shirts, generic t-shirts, or you can even think about like a brand store like Nike or Vans or something like that. Or you got something like a general store, like I was just saying, um, one of those random stores like you usually find uh, in the beach area where it's like a whole bunch of tropical print shirts those stores with like a lot of airbrush type shirts so these are directed customer it usually involves higher pricing but selling fewer items you're not selling hundreds of thousands to one or two customers right you're selling maybe two three shirts at a time at best five to ten or so per customer and it usually involves higher pricing so 
you're probably looking at like between 20 and 30 bucks uh, per shirt. Um, but beforehand, with the B2B structure, you're looking at anywhere between like four to seven. It can get a little higher depending on the premium of uh, your print quality and printer and all of that. So um, just two different pricing structures because you're selling to two different types of customers. All right, so this is digging a little deeper into the two on demand versus stocking inventory. So on demand, you have a little bit less risk because you don't have to stock up on t-shirts and whatnot. It's a little more work because anytime you get an order, you gotta worry about getting those t-shirt blanks in. You gotta worry about um, getting the print material for that t-shirt. So it's a little more work, but um, it's slightly less profit margin. Not saying there's a huge difference until you get into the huge sales racket. Um, it's a little bit less profit margin because if you're ordering t-shirts on demand you're not able to get that bulk pricing if you're not ordering cases and cases of shirts you're not able to get those good discounts same as your print supplies so you know how it goes like for a roll of vinyl you're probably paying like 30 bucks for a few yards and then for a whole bunch of yards you're able to save a few uh, bucks um, it wouldn't really make sense when you're only making a few sales but if you're doing thousands of sales those few bucks add up a lot so stocking inventory is a little more risk because even if you're getting a whole bunch of sales, um, let's say you were affected by uh, COVID or something, all of a sudden you're sitting on a whole bunch of inventory that you can't get rid of. Um, I won't say it's less work, it's still work, but it's not as much of a hassle as doing it on demand. When you're doing something on demand, you gotta scavenge around, get the print material, get the the blanks and all of that. If you're stocking up on your your supplies, then your stuff's already there. You're able to get to work right then and there. And with stocking the inventory, you're able to maximize on your profit margin. You're getting the best prices for your blanks, you're getting the best uh, prices for your supplies and all of that. So um, being able to stock up on these goods, you're able to maximize that profit. So there's pros and cons to both. You can always do a little bit of a mixture um, you got to do what's best for you um here's just a few more business models to look at you got pre-orders right so let's say you list up a t-shirt for sale you got to buy it by this date once that date gets cut off um, you got to fulfill those orders practically the same thing as on demand uh, you got fairs and events so you go be a vendor at an event you have to pay an upfront uh, price for the most part and then you know you sell your t-shirts and whatnot you could be either of the two you could be a t-shirt printing business or you can actually sell your brand um, it gives you exposure and you can also get some sales on the spot um, subscription model almost the same thing as pre-order um, you get a few subscribers sign up every single month you charge them a flat rate every single month and then you provide X amount of shirts every single month so practically almost also a on-demand type model and just to mention again, brand and wholesale. Brand, practically you're uh, printing for your own brand. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a brand. You're just printing your own t-shirts for sale and then you got wholesale. So you're also fulfilling for other businesses and you're doing screen printing for other t-shirt businesses as well. So you could do a little bit of the two. You could also do this with subscription models and pre-orders. It doesn't always have to be a brand. If you're just doing uh, printing, imagine you being a business who provides 100 shirts per month to another business but you do it at a very good price and they have to sign up for at least like three months or something and they get 100 shirts per month or something and then imagine um, you're able to get a whole bunch of these members in this subscription model so you know it doesn't always have to be uh, just a t-shirt brand it could just be you doing t-shirt printing as well um, and then I just wanted to talk real quick about standalone versus marketplace websites. So standalone website is something like Shopify or um, WooCommerce and then a marketplace website is like Etsy or Amazon. Etsy and Amazon already has traffic coming to it because they're popular websites, they're marketplaces where any seller can sell on. Um, fees are typically a little bit higher because the traffic's already there. Standalone websites, Shopify, uh, WooCommerce, you know, there's a few other platforms. It's your own website. You have to drive the traffic there. Fees are much, much lower, but that's because you have to find a way to drive your own traffic to your website. So yeah, there's obviously more business models, but that's just a few that I wanted to cover real quick. Here's my current business model. I do B2C, I sell directly to the customer. Mostly on demand, printed with the white toner printer at the moment or vinyl. Um, I just wanna say, 
my current bit I say current because my business model changes all the time you have to adapt when things get messed up you have to change so I sell on marketplaces SEN Amazon Shopify and Facebook ads I don't necessarily sell in a specific niche or niche and um, it's not a brand just generic t-shirts whatever's in seasonal shirts a generic t-shirts I love my mom type shirts best dad ever shirts all of that that's what I'm selling um so I do that mostly on demand one-off orders I do it myself or I get one of my family members to come print for me and the popular items um, they get turned into pre-made heat transfers this saves a whole lot of time when I say it saves a whole lot of time it saves a whole lot of time and why do I deal with heat transfers instead of getting it screen printed on t-shirts because I don't have to do the guesswork of which color shirts are popular which sizes are popular um, I still order the t-shirts on demand I just stock up on my primary colors that are popular such as black grays and whatnot so with heat transfers I'm not stuck to a certain size and a certain color as if I got everything screen printed um, and I also work with fulfillment from other private printers I say quote-unquote private because um, they're not really known it's like a you know a printer you have to find yourself or they try to do their own advertising for the screen print shop or whatever shop it may be but they're not known as a uh, fulfiller like that it's basically the same as working with Printify or Printful however you're able to build a stronger relationship with um, your local printer or wherever your printer is because you can talk to them directly let them know what you're exactly doing um, you know if something screws up then you have communication not like Printify or Printful like when the qu whole quarantine happened and uh, orders got delayed and delayed and delayed and there's no communication knowing that this was going to happen if you're working with a quote-unquote private printer you know you have communication he can let you know ahead of time so for me it's been a lot easier to work with a printer outside of the mainstream fulfillment um, websites so uh, with all that being said there is no perfect model you have to choose what works best for you you can do a mixture you can do whatever it may be and don't be afraid to change your business model um, you have to do things you've never done to get to places you've never been all right so I hope that helped you out I hope you're able to use some of this knowledge for your t-shirt business and uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel heat transfer warehouses channel both of our Instagrams for a chance to win a heat press and two hundred dollars credit that you can use towards super color transfers and uh, if you're watching this video sometime in the future still hit subscribe because we may be doing another giveaway there could be one going on now who knows because I can't read the future but I thank y'all for watching please hit the like button subscribe and I'll see you next time Thank you.